Hello, in this session I am going to discuss the elements of mechanical engineering second model in that heat transfer applications. In that review of modes of heat transfer, automobile radiators, condensers and evaporators of refrigeration systems, cooling of electrical and electronics devices, active, passive and hybrid cooling. Firstly, I will take a review of modes of heat transfer. The heat is the form of energy that can transfer from high temperature region to the low temperature region. Okay, that will call as a heat transfer. Here, the heat transfer taking place in different modes. Okay, that we will discuss here. The first thing that heat transfer of energy as heat is always from the higher temperature medium to the lower temperature medium and heat transfer talks when the two mediums reach the same temperature. Heat transfer can be heat can be transferred in three basic modes conduction, convection, radiation. All the modes of heat transfer require the existence of temperature difference. Conduction conduction is the mode of heat transfer in which heat transfer takes place from higher temperature to lower temperature by direct impact of molecules or molecular vibration. In case of solids and in case of metals by drift of free electrons. In solids it is due to the combination of vibrations of the molecules in a lattice and the energy transport by free electrons. In solids if the metal speed is there then the molecules may vibrate to transfer the heat from one to other thereby the conduction is taking place, heat transfer is taking place or the free electrons present in that one those may be moved to transfer the heat. Also in the stationary gases and liquids also the heat transfer takes place by the conduction mode of the heat transfer. In this one actually the whatever the heat is transferring through the solids where the molecules are attached with each other thereby direct contact with the molecules each other and their vibrations when they get heated thereby the heat transfer is taking place. The best example of this one is given heat transfer through the solids. Through all solids the heat transfer taking place that is called as a conduction mode of heat transfer. In the stationary liquids and gases those will be rarely the conduction will be taking place. Next convection. Convection is the mode of heat transfer in which heat transfer takes place from higher temperature region to lower temperature region by kinetic motion or molecular motion from solid surface to a fluid vice versa or within the fluids whatever the heat is transferring that we will call as a convection. Here within the from the solid surface to the fluid medium or within the fluid whatever the heat transfer is taking place by the actual movement of the molecules. Okay, That is the molecular motion that is the convection mode of the heat transfer. The convection may be of two types. The first one is a force convection. If the fluid movement is there okay, to carry the heat, okay, that force to flow over the surface by external means such as fan, pump or blower. In natural convection or free convection is called, if the fluid motion is called by buoyancy forces that are induced by the density difference due to the variation of temperature in the fluid. Okay, here the in the natural or free convection, okay, the fluid movement is naturally or freely it will be moving due to the density difference which is caused by the temperature. Then in absence of the bulk fluid motion, if the fluid is not moving, then the heat transfer between the solid and fluid takes place by the conduction in the stationary fluids that is. Next is radiation. Radiation is the mode of heat transfer in which heat transfer takes place by electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic waves or photons. The energy emitted by matter in the form of electromagnetic waves or photons as a result of change in the electronic configurations of the atoms and molecules. Here the matter whatever is there that will emit the uh, energy in the form of electromagnetic waves. Okay, that is called as the radiations. Okay, actually this is an example as the sun. The sun is emitting the radiation in the form of electromagnetic waves. Unlike conduction and convection, the heat transfer uh, transfer of heat by radiation does not require any intervening medium. In the conduction, the solid medium is required to transfer the heat. In the convection, 
the fluid medium is required to transfer the heat but here there is no medium is required even though through the vacuum the heat transfer taking place by the radiation mode of heat transfer this is how the energy from the sun reaches to the earth here we can see that part there is a atmosphere there is a limit okay behind that the total vacuum is there total vacuum is there even though through that vacuum the heat is transferring from the sun to the earth okay that is by the radiation mode of the heat transfer here the re always the heat transfer studies are concerned those are very much interested in the thermal radiation because the thermal radiation the heat emitted by the radiation bodies because their temperature that is due to the temperature only emitting is taking place that's why the study are interested in this radiation then here the when radiation takes place all the bodies at a temperature above the absolute zero temperature those will emit the thermal radiation and thereby the heat transfer is taking place here the between the sun to earth whatever the heat is transferring that is by the radiation heat transfer this is about the three modes of heat transfer then we will explain this is with a sketch we can take that is first one this is the conduction if you hold the needle okay over the candle burning candle that one in the one end first it will be get heated then the transfer the heat through that needle and we will feel the hot and that whatever the heat is transferring that is by the conduction then if any hot object if it is kept and over that when the fan uh, is used to flow the air then the heat is transferring from the hot object to the surrounding air that is the by the force of conduction if the hot object is kept openly then the air is moving naturally over that one to transfer the heat then that is the natural conduction here we can see this one uh, from the sun to earth whatever the heat we are receiving that is by the electromagnetic waves that is the best example for the radiation heat transfer here the combining all the three modes of heat transfer you can see that one whenever the, uh, if you heat the water okay, for, through the fire the whatever this one uh, receiving the radiation in the form of radiation heat we are receiving and within the uh, fluid liquid the heat is transferring by uh, whatever this uh, convection mode of heat transfer and uh, through the solid whatever the pan is there the heat is conducting by the conduction we feel the hot at the other end this one we can see that all the three modes of heat transfer then automobile radiators okay here we will explain about the automobile radiators the radiators are heat exchangers used for cooling internal combustion engines mainly in automobiles but also in the piston engined aircraft railway mo mo locomotives motorcycles stationary generating plant or any similar use of the such an engine internal combustion engines are often cooled by circulating liquid called engine coolant through the engine block and the cylinder head where it is heated and then through the radiator where it is loses the heat to the atmosphere and then return to the engine for again cooling okay the engine coolant is usually water based but may also be a oil okay it may be water based coolant or it may be oil in order to have the higher rate of heat transfer it is uh, employ water pump to force the engine to coolant circuit circulate it and also for an axial fan to force air air through the radiator okay here the fan is also is for the force the air here we can see that one okay these are the engine cylinders over this one the coolant is moving that coolant and circulating over the engine cylinder and that will be get heated okay that receiving the heat from it then it will goes to the radiator where it transfer the heat to the surrounding air by when the air is flowing by the fan and that will be get cooled and th that it will be recirculated to the engine like this by using this radiator we can cool the engine cylinder that is automobile radiators are very important in order to cool the engines okay those are the radiator applications here almost all automobiles and the internal combustion engines where it is using the radiator are using for the cooling the next one is condenser and evaporators of refrigeration system in the condenser and evaporators these are uh, the refrigerant whatever we are going to use in the refrigeration system that will takes undergoes the phase change and in actually the whatever this um, compressor after the compressor the, the vapor is compressor 
then that compressor vapor is passed through a condenser where the air is flowing over there and that will be get whatever the uh, condensed to a liquid state by discharging the heat to the surrounding air and that whatever the liquid is there that is expanded through expansion valve and after that the low pressure whatever is there that enters into the evaporator the evaporator receives the heat from the surrounding cooling space or that uh, refrigerator cabin and that will be get heated and that will be whatever evaporated okay this is the evaporator okay that will be get evaporated to vapor form then again it is compressed and recirculated in the system for the refrigeration and here both this condenser and the evaporators are heat exchangers okay then one is receiving the heat another one is discharging the heat and there the phase change is taking place that is the important uh, function that is required for the refrigeration systems next one cooling of electrical and electronic devices here the electronic devices during their operation longer duration of the operation those will be get heated and those should be cooled in order to have the proper functioning or proper operation and for that purpose the various techniques of uh, cooling are used that may be a direct natural cooling or it may be forced cooling by using the fan or it may be used uh, the some liquid cooling also used the any one of the methods we are going to use for cooling the this electronic devices the electronic components require cooling during their longer operations such as computer server we can see the computer server where the the various cooling is required then there are several techniques for cooling including uh, various styles of uh, heat sinks thermoelectric coolers forced air systems and fans heat pipes and others those are used and here one of this one the thermosiphon cooling it is thermosiphon cooling this is heat is generated and that air is moving over the rotated object and that will be get heated and that enters here that one that will be moving in this one because of this fan one fan is used that is uh, air is forced air to follow flow in this direction and another fan is used here to fan for the air circulation due to that one the siphon the heat is extracted the heat is extracted by using that one okay this is photograph you can see that fair the fan is used for cooling the electronics and another side that is a natural cooling is used in this one the next one active cooling here in this one first we'll take that is active cooling the active cooling refers to cooling technology that rely on the external devices to enhance the heat transfer here the active devices means here external devices we are going to use for blowing the air here actually uh, air uh, or a water or a liquid movement should be required for the cooling and external devices are used to flow the these fluids and the active cooling active cooling include the forced air through fan or blower forced liquid thermoelectric coolers such which can be optimized thermal management on the all levels here we can see the the fan we can use or we can use blower for air movement or the force liquid we can use to cool it okay in the active cooling we are going to use the that external devices like fan blower or force liquid by using the pumps to cool the system okay here the fan whatever is used okay that is another active cooling if you use the fan over there that is uh, blowing the air over this uh, component okay that will be get cooling that one that is the active cooling then passive cooling in this passive cooling what is there then naturally it will cools that passive cooling utilizes the natural conduction convection and radiation to cool the component passive cooling does not require the use of energy consuming devices for cooling like fan blower pump it will not use any fan blower naturally the air whatever flowing over the uh, that components that will be get cool that is called as passive cooling here we can see that one okay here over the one component the pins are provided pins are provided in order to enhance the heat transfer the whatever the air is moving over here that will carry the heat thereby the cooling will be taking place that is naturally cooling taking place that is called as a passive cooling then hybrid cooling the hybrid cooling means here, here it will be used the combination of that uh, um, two or more that whatever the cooling systems that is called as hybrid cooling this simply implies the combination of liquid or air cooling for higher power dissipation electronics while minimizing contact resistance throughout the system that will minimize the contact resistance throughout system also 
in this any combination of the air cooled condensers cooling towers surface condensers and air cooled heat exchangers is commonly termed as a hybrid cooling system these hybrid cooling systems are commonly used when water is available but not in the quantities necessary to support 100% wet cooled system here both we are using the air cooling and the, the other cooling systems also and this is an example here it is given the one of the component that a uh, uh, electronic device which is to be cooled okay then it is having the high heat therefore the one cooling method is not sufficient okay cabin heat exchanger this one the, for that one cooling this here the air is blowing the air is flows there which will carry some heat then also the water uh, coolant is circulated here the water based coolant or it may be oil coolant it will circulate it to cool is this one okay here the blue line it will be cold and that is circulated that will be get heated and uh, this uh, red line that will be the the hot coolant will be circulating and that is circulated to the radiator in order to exchange the heat to the surrounding air the surrounding air it will be dissipates the heat then by using the pump the pump whatever is there that it will be recirculated to the that cabinet again by using this liquid circulation also cooling taking place and also the air is used that is the air cooling both the air and liquid cooling is used in this one that is the hybrid cooling for the higher heat exchange we are going to use that when the combination of the heat transfer technologies this is about the hybrid cooling okay i will complete the, at this point okay thank you and we will continue in the next class